Hello everyone, I'm Sonic Senraku, and welcome to my Advanced Tech Splash Combat Tips and Tricks series for Neo The World Ends With You. In this particular video, we're going to be discussing ways to intuitively integrate Time Bomb and Minefield type pins into practical Neo combat, while also exploring ways to elevate those tactics into higher level play. Based on some of the conversations I've seen around pin utility, Time Bombs and Minefield pins are typically viewed by the average Neo player as having their usefulness dwarfed when compared to pins of a similar input, or just other pins in general. I don't necessarily blame or bemoan players for feeling that way, if even initially. Other pins in the early game are arguably more useful to a newer player, presenting a wider breadth of accessibility for a more aggressive approach to combat, or just better suited for a button mashing playstyle. After all, who would want to use a minefield pin like out of your mind, when a player can easily rely on dynamite darts or four strong pins to pile on higher doses of damage with less time wasted? Why waste two pin slots for the sake of a tripwire into minefield slash time bomb setup? When tripwires have a long reboot time, and on the whole, would probably net a player less damage per meter usage than a combination that didn't require this kind of passive setup. Why not just combo a sword slash into a dynamite dart explosion with the status effect of freezing slash entombing, follow it up with a piercing pillar launcher, then finally close the combo off with an aerial assassin boosted pile driver psych. Rinse and repeat. Due to the aforementioned combo synergy, the player would be dishing out far more damage per pin meter usage without having to sacrifice reboot speed. It could still immobilize enemies with dynamite darts to slow down enemy offense, rack up groove meter, and... Shit. I'm supposed to be vouching for the merits of time bombs and minefields, aren't I? Well, I mean, I figured the best way to defend these kind of pins is to present the counter argument, validate it, then explain why the counter argument doesn't capture the entire picture. All of that is to say that I generally understand why players would shy away from these groups of pins upon first impression. However, one of the best things about Neo as a game is how almost every pin, if not every pin, is viable in some kind of way, primarily due to how adroitly designed this game's combat mechanics are, and how such design can support any kind of playstyle a player is into. Time bombs and minefields may feel limiting in the early game in comparison to other options, but as you acquire better versions of these sites, more versatile pins, more party members, and stronger threats, the player is granted multiple degrees of flexibility with making this set play fighting style useful. While at first it may seem like time bombs and minefields need to rely on specific setups to be worthwhile, the deeper you get into the game, and more accustomed you become with its mechanics, the more you will realize the plethora of ways to combo into bombs. Minefields, and especially time bombs, have a high skill floor in terms of efficient using combat, but upon mastery, they provide some of the most unique and satisfying combo setups this game has to offer. Alrighty, let's talk about minefields first. While these pin types don't exactly live up to their namesake, as in expecting them to behave like actual pressure slash motion sensitive mines that enemy noise could activate by landing on top of, they still reward the player for smart positioning, awareness of enemy hit stun states, and perspicacious consideration of pin synergy. As mentioned before, you can guarantee damage from a minefield explosion by immobilizing enemies, usually through a variety of movement restricting sites such as black holes, trip wires, and snare traps. Even poltergeist sites like the Deadly Fragrance pin can be used to swing around and toss enemies into the impending explosion, either before or right as it's going off. Knocking enemies into a downstate and quickly following it up with mines is yet another simple and effective way to guarantee a hit. Whether it's launching the enemy and waiting for them to drop onto the mines, pile driving the enemy into the ground, or smashing them into a wall, then setting up mines. Using a minefield will immediately deplete your pin gauge. However, more than likely, by the time the bombs go off, your pin would be halfway towards recovering, as the pin starts its reboot even before the bombs actually detonate, allowing the player to quickly place another set of mines with a fair bit of immediacy and keeping offensive pressure rolling along quite smoothly. This is especially true when equipping threads that offer the rapid reboot ability, significantly speeding up the time it takes another use of minefields to be available. Despite minefield pins placing a group of mines on the floor in one single use and seemingly exploding at the same time, the explosions actually go off consecutively meaning it's possible to get multiple hits off on enemies. Minefields possessing this attribute means that a player can create multiple B-drop combos in one use when paired with certain pins. Notice in this example here how I'm able to get multiple B-drops through the mine explosions by dragging this grizzly through it, racking up over 60 points of groove, and this could have been even higher if the characters who were performing this combo were groove buddies like Rindo and Trek, or Rindo and Shoka. So while it may not seem like it upon first impression, Considerate minefield set play in synergistic harmony with other pins, especially ones that inflict consecutive damage per use, can yield a large pool of groove points, giving players the ability to activate powerful mashup reprisals and even use those mashups to combo into other minefield explosions. With the right build, you can whip up a maelstrom of damage in battle, especially when following up your combos with powerful mashup attacks. 
Minefields can also be used defensively, in that you can place them between you and a group of noise, allowing you to focus on a particular enemy, while using the mine's explosion as a shield of sorts against stray enemy noise charging at your blind spots. Dodging into the explosion also works as a defensive crowd control measure, by flinching enemy noise before their attacks can hit, giving the player some breathing room to decompress before getting back on the offensive. Lastly, if your playstyle consists of inflicting passive damage on enemies through status ailments and in a combination of perpetual pain threads, which increase the duration of status ailments, then minefield pins are going to be right up your alley, as most of those pins are characteristically tied to some kind of status afflicting attribute. This extra defining attribute for minefields help differentiate them from time bombs, which speaking of, let's talk about those. Ah, but before we do, let's take a look at what effective utilization of minefields look like in combat. So without further ado, let's move on to time bombs. Time bombs differ from minefield pins in that for one, they can have more than one use per pin meter. Some time bombs even allow the player to drop a max of 4 bombs per meter, although just like minefields, their meter won't recover unless they've been used up completely. While minefields are characteristically status inflicting explosions, time bombs differentiate themselves by being explosives with launching properties, like being able to blast the enemy directly upwards, or ones that blast them horizontally across the stage. The launch property of time bombs stay in effect for as long as the explosion lingers, which can give the player the extra bit of time they need to smack noise into the radius of the attack and confirm the launch. Time bombs share most of the pros of minefields, such as the ability to place them around the field as a defensive measure, as well as the tendency to start rebooting, giving you drain the meter, even when active bombs have yet to explode. 
Just like with minefields, this makes time bombs available for use fairly quickly after detonation, especially with rapid reboot threads equipped, removing the need to be conservative with your use. Time bomb explosions are also capable of tripping off one another, allowing the player to place a cluster of them near each other and reveling in their amplified explosive force since each bomb's explosion counts as a separate hit. The ability for time bombs to trip each other off can be utilized in tactically creative ways as well. Say you set a bomb near an enemy, but they've moved away from it and are now out of its blast radius. Rather than letting the explosion go to waste, you can place another bomb within the estimated explosion radius so that when the first bomb goes off, it'll trip off the second, extending the explosive force over to the enemy that was previously out of its reach, as seen in this example. Using time bombs in such a manner changes its utility from simply a passive tool to one that's more proactive and aggressive, as the player can now exert more control over the range of the explosions. Depending on the size of the stage, you can even place bombs on the field in such a manner that upon tripping off each other, create a wide enough blast radius to cover most of the arena and eradicating noise within its zone. This kind of strategy is most effective in narrow arenas such as this one, showing off how time bombs can be used as an offensive and defensive tool simultaneously, which is pretty damn cool. Like minefields, there are various options a player can use to confirm their time bomb setups. You can use tripwires or black hole pins to hold enemies down to ensure they're caught in the explosion. Use a massive hit pin to knock an enemy into an ensuing explosion. Use poltergeist pins like Deadly Fragrance or Exercise and Gator to toss enemies into an explosion for a cool follow-up. Or simply knock enemies into a down state to guarantee a hit from the explosion. When you get more comfortable with your time bomb placements, you'll be able to accomplish impressive setups like knocking an enemy into an explosion, predicting where they'll land, and having a second bomb ready to assault them once they land within its blast zone. Another gratifying setup is being able to place a bomb, then sending the enemy flying towards the opposite side of the stage using another psych, before quickly launching them right back into the bomb just in time to catch the explosion. Now before we wrap this video up, let's take a look at efficient time bomb use during typical noise encounters. Yeah, 
だぞ喜びすぎてタイムボンズ、when one becomes practiced enough with their use, provides some of the most interesting high level fun Neo has to offer. Genius placement of bombs during high speed combos keep your mind racing and test the limits of your spatial awareness and reaction time, resulting in an experience that feels visceral and rewarding. Just the kind of experience you'd expect from a well designed combat system. Outside of being stylish, Time bombs also have their use against some bosses, as they can be synergized with other pins and threads to decimate them. The Big Chungus and X Sonic Dragon, two Neo The World Ends With You players, have videos on their YouTube channels demonstrating the fatality bombs dish out on some bosses. Video links will be in the description. And that's all I've got for this video. Join me next time as we analyze conservation of momentum and inertia in Neo's combat, and how you can use these concepts to alter the makeup of your pin combinations. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to stay locked in for more Neo content, as well as other video game related uploads in the near future. Thank you all for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.